What's up everybody? I am not sure what's true or false in this video. This is a gossip video just like on a gossip blog website. So I take rumor and tea and gossip from online, from magazines, from books, from wherever I can find it and I ball it up and I tell you guys a story. Now let's get to the video. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. Quit snooping around my... Oh hold on wait. Sorry. That's the wrong version. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. Crying all the time. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. Crying all the time. Yes, Scandalites and says so Squad. It is time to get in some of the messiest and most scandalous details of the one who was christened the king of rock and roll, Mr. Elvis Presley. Our sponsor for today is my home slice, honey. Skillshare. And of course, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes for anybody who loves learning. I mean, just take a look at some of the classes they offer, honey. Baby, Skillshare is on they stuff. Now, I keep telling y'all, Skillshare has helped me out a lot, and I'm definitely going to continue using that program all throughout 2022 and beyond because I just want to get bigger and better, baby. And the latest class I'm taking is called Becoming an Instagram Influencer, Creating Authentic Content, and Monetizing your followers. Y'all need to get bigger and better right along with me. So once again, I done made a deal with Skillshare. And that deal is the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get one month free of Skillshare. Go and click the link and sign up. Ooh. Now let's go and get into the tea. On January the 8th, 1935, Jesse Garen Presley was born. His mother Gladys and his father Vernon cooed around their little baby, but then they started to notice that their baby was not cooing back. In fact, not only was their newborn baby not cooing, this child wasn't responding to anything. As Gladys started to realize the situation, she couldn't even react because soon there was a deep pressure stirring in her loin. This pressure was the pressure of childbirth. So overwhelmed with sadness and pain, Gladys started to push and she pushed and she pushed and before long Elvis Aaron Presley was welcomed into the world so yes for those of you who did not know Elvis Presley was born a twin and the location of his birth was Tupelo Mississippi Vernon and Gladys were very very poor people Elvis and his parents moved around several times because they could not afford good housing and Vernon just would not hold down a job it's also said that he was a finger pointer meaning he was always blaming everybody else for his problems he always had pity on himself you know, he just was always like, you know, I ain't gonna never be nothing. Don't nothing ever work out for me. And then he was like jealous of other people. You know, look at Ricky. Ricky, he ain't even graduate high school. How he get an office job? You know, he was one of those people. And because he was like this, around this time, the Presleys lived in a one-room shack. You know, they lived in a homeless shelter. They lived in a house that was completely falling apart. And also because Vernon was like this, Gladys found herself having to be kind of like the man of the house. She had to step up and take authority because her husband really just could not make a life for them in the beginning. And in regards to Elvis and the relationship he had with his parents, it is said that he had a deep bond with both parents, but the bond that he had with Vernon was nothing compared to the burn he had with Gladys. Baby, they say Elvis was spoiled, rotten. He was a mama's boy and she was putting him first and above everybody. And Gladys was very much one of those mothers who was like, mm -mm, you know, not my boy. And whenever Elvis kind of like did something bad, it was always somebody else that was making him do it. You know what I'm saying? Leading him to the bad way. It was never anything that Elvis had done on his own. But child, Gladys might as well go ahead and sit down somewhere, baby, because her son was being just as bad as everybody else in the neighborhood. And I know for sure that one thing he was doing was disobeying. Elvis was supposed to keep his little white behind on the white side of town and leave the black folks where they was at on the black side of town. So I come almost every day Elvis Littell sitting up there walking straight to the black side of town. In fact, I had a source to email me and tell me that she knew for a fact that Elvis was always walking on the black side of town because she said that her granddaddy was right there walking with him. She said that her granddaddy and Elvis were very young and they used to always go to the black side of town called Shake Rag. And when they got to Shake Rag, they would walk right up to the juke joint and they would find a place to hide so they can sit and listen to black music. And she also said the top place where they would sneak to was the outside of the black church. That is because the black church would hold choir rehearsal and Elvis and her granddaddy just loved to hear those black voices. They would hide out in 
the bushes right beside the front door and she said that if any one of those choir members like looked out the window or walked out of the front door she was almost sure that they would see those little bushes shaking and moving honey and if they looked inside of them Elvis and his little friend would be in there getting down baby just jamming to the music. Now this was in fact when Elvis was very young and that is very believable to me because when Elvis was very young he started to develop a real serious taste for music. In fact he was only eight years old when he was asked to come up at the radio show and sing with country western singer Mississippi Slim. Elvis started to develop his voice more and more where it said that Elvis started to sing even at his own church. Now when I say this I don't mean he was standing up like singing soloist songs or anything like that. I don't think he was doing that but he definitely would stand up and sing with the congregation. You know, he was not afraid to let his voice be heard. Even though Elvis's musical talents were becoming more and more evident, they went unnoticed by the townspeople because the townspeople instead focused on how poor the Presleys were. I mean, gossip claims that Elvis and his mother and father really were the poorest white people in town. It is said that some of even the black residents had more money than them. And because of this, little Elvis was treated very, very badly by those around him. His classmates mocked the fact that Vernon was a convicted felon. They also mocked Elvis's clothes and his mother Gladys. And most of all, they mocked the fact that Elvis's little broke down house did not have a front porch. And baby, the folks say them kids used to go in on Elvis's house and that dang on front porch. I mean, they was cracking jokes like, uh, Elvis, when you come out the front door, baby, I bet you got to jump down on the ground, honey, cause you ain't got no front porch. Elvis was so poor that when he got to the sixth grade, they had a class picture. The teacher made sure to situate him in the back and basically to hide his legs and the reason they did this is because Elvis didn't even have on any shoes. Elvis struggled terribly around this time. As time went along it is said that Gladys kind of took note that her son liked music or kind of wanted to do something with music so she took six dollars and ninety five cent and she purchased him a guitar but to her surprise child it's claimed that Elvis kind of had an attitude you know what I'm saying sitting up there talking about he wanted a bicycle or he wanted a sled or he just into anything he ain't want that doggone guitar but Gladys was like baby I bought you a guitar this what it is or you ain't getting nothing and so then Elvis shut his little mouth took that guitar and over time he learned to be grateful for that little guitar because he got really good at playing it not only did Elvis become grateful for that guitar he became very attached to this guitar everywhere you saw Elvis you saw that guitar even when he was just taking walks down the street and since he was holding his guitar and walking down the street you would expect him to maybe start strumming his guitar or maybe singing a little song or something like that but child instead of doing that Elvis was doing something to scare folks child he was talking laughing playing giggling and everything and this scared people because Elvis was by himself his mouth movements and the way he looked over and the way he paused and waited like somebody was talking to him it was like Elvis was talking to somebody and most people chalked it up to Elvis talking to an imaginary friend but when somebody asked him about his imaginary friend and Elvis turned around and said no I'm talking to Jesse yes that scared a lot of people because Jesse was not imaginary nor was he Elvis's friend he was his very real dead twin brother outside of this creepy thing that was going on with Elvis him having this guitar really changed things for him in fact one of the teachers at his school found out that Elvis could play and she had him perform for her class and before you know it two other classrooms asked Elvis to perform for them and of course when this happened that little raggedy boy that everybody had been making fun of all of a sudden didn't seem really really raggedy and the boys and the girls of the school started to pay a little bit more attention to Elvis but child Elvis little banana head almost stopped his social growth as soon as it started. I guess he had got bitten in the behind with this whole music artist type thing. So then this crazy boy started trying to dress the part. Suddenly he started coming to school with his hair slicked back just right. Grew out his sideburns and had slicked them down with rose oil and Vaseline. Started wearing shirts that had collars on them and sometimes even wearing suits. And then sitting up there wearing some shoes that was too big for him like some big man shoes. He basically transformed himself into dressing like a country western singer would dress on TV. Instead of impressing the children, they end up kind of giggling at him. You know what I'm saying? Kind of making fun of him all over again because this right here is weird to them. And not only was this happening at Milam Junior High, which is the school that he was currently at, but it also was happening at Humus High School because soon Elvis and his family had moved away from Tupelo and moved to Memphis. But to move along with the story, Elvis did continue high school and he finished 
in 1953 and also in 1953 he decided to go ahead and become a professional singer so elvis walks right into sun records and he lays down a song called my happiness and elvis is so proud of himself you know he sounds so good and he's just waiting for somebody to pick him up because he knows that he is the next big thing and whoever was supposed to pick him up just kept on walking right on by him because they didn't see in Elvis what he saw. And when Elvis noticed that nobody was trying to pick him up, he was sitting up there looking embarrassed. So then his little tail came up with a lie talking about some, uh, that song, My Happiness, I was just recording that for my mama. That was just a gift for her. I wasn't really serious on that song. But sir, please stop because yes, you were. And we can tell he was serious about being picked up because soon after that first album, Elvis recorded another album. But again, nothing happened, and this time Elvis didn't even try to make up an excuse. He just steadied himself and told himself that he was destined to be a singer no matter what, and he kept on trying. The fact that Elvis kept on trying was not an easy task for him. He had people tell him straight out that he was not a good singer. He had people tell him from all over that, you know, you're just not gonna make it, son. You don't have what it takes. But no matter what, Elvis Presley just kept pushing, kept pushing, and kept pushing, and he kept failing, and kept failing, and kept Philly. And then on one night, right before Elvis and the other people in the studio with him were about to leave, Elvis just jumped up out of nowhere and just started strumming on his guitar. And he was like shaking his head and he was just going crazy. And he was singing a song called That's All Right. And That's All Right was actually a song that originally came out in 1920s and was recorded by Blind Lemon. But Elvis was singing it like with a different way. There was a twist on it. Elvis had put some soul on that thing. You know what I'm saying? He was emphasizing certain words and you know, he was just doing it in a way that a white man had never sang before. This made some of the ears of the people in the studio, some of their ears perked up. One of them finally is like, hot dog, boy, that's it. That's it, boy, you got it. So he's turning on all of the equipment and he's trying to record Elvis. And so Elvis is like, got what? You know, I'm just playing around. The guy that's trying to record is like, boy, listen to me. I don't know what it is that you was doing, but baby, you better figure it out because that's the only way that your behind gonna get somewhere. And so Elvis stopped, you know what I mean? And he kind of thought about what he did and he kind of just tried to redo what he did. And luckily he was able to capture that essence that he had just put out. And so they recorded the song, That's All Right. Honey, when they put that song on the radio, the phone started lighting up off the hook. Some folks called in and wanted to know when did this particular radio station start playing black music. And some folks called in and said they never wanted to hear the song again but they did not matter because majority of the calls that were coming in were in support of this song and they definitely were in support of Elvis and so Elvis pretty much becomes a sensation a white man that sounds like a black man like are you kidding me he's now starting to get invited to local shows performing at all of the hayride performing at all of the hoedown all of those girls that were kicking and laughing at him in high school are now suddenly sitting on the front row trying to catch his eye and his fame at this time is really still largely local, but it's spreading across the South like flames. You know what I'm saying? Like wildfire. And so what it shows is that it's very clear that this young guy Elvis is headed for great things. And no, once again, everybody is not comfortable with the music that he is putting out, but they are accepting it for right now. But honey, that all is about to change because Elvis is about to put out a song called Heartbreak Hotel. And girl, Elvis, I'd be shaming himself for sitting up there putting out a song like that, honey. Child, I usually say the folks be sitting up there with their hair blue back. Honey, after they heard this song, them folks ain't even had no hair, child. They hair was blue off of their head. Baby, I promise you, them folks were sitting up there bald-headed after listening to this song, especially white conservatives. They did not know what hit them and they could have fell dead. What, with Elvis? Is sitting up there singing this song and doing it all breathy like and just the way he was doing his words and you know he basically sounded like he had just got finished giving it to all of their daughters and if he wasn't just finished he was about to give it to all their daughters he was singing with a tempo and a beat and a bass and a sound that only black male singers sang with you know what i mean this just was unheard of with a white boy and like i said they really imagined that elvis was coming for their daughters and their wives you know what i'm saying and not only was elvis coming for their daughters and their wives their wives and daughters was freely going with elvis you know this is the type of stuff that they were imagining it was just a 
scandalous thing, child. And people were in an uproar, but the song was selling like hotcakes, especially when Elvis came out with another song called Hound Dog. And yes, this is the one I made fun of in the beginning, because yes, that song was originally recorded by Big Mama Thornton back in 1953, but Elvis had remade the song. Then you got Jailhouse Rock, and it was just like Elvis was just coming out with all of these songs, and not only were he coming out with these songs, he was doing these live shows, and that is when things really took a turn for the worse. The boy was cutting up. Baby, they said Elvis would come out there gyrating them doggone hips, you know what I'm saying? And he would get so worked up and so wild and just so crazy until he just got overcome and he couldn't take it anymore. And honestly, his performance looked a lot like Jackie Wilson's. Just like Jackie Wilson's because per Elvis, he took some stuff from Jackie Wilson. In fact, per Elvis, he called himself the white Jackie Wilson. And so think of what Jackie Wilson was doing. Put that on a white boy and put that white boy in front of a bunch of female teenagers or female young women. Yes, these girls were going absolutely insane and people started to feel like they were losing control. He was very much making people like Frank Sinatra and Bing Crosby and all of these 1940s heavyweights, he was making them very nervous because they had never had women just fall out over them like this. And baby, they said them little teen white girls would get loose, baby. They said that all that little virginal and little innocent mess, baby, that stuff was out of the window when Elvis came on stage. Baby, they said Elvis used to just do stuff. You know what I'm saying? Even one person said that he had spit out his gum towards the audience. Basically spit out his gum to the audience. And when he did, guess what the girls did? Ah, yes! More gum! More gum, please! Said he would wipe the sweat from his forehead and fling it out to him, and the girls would just sizzle, baby. You know what I'm saying? They're just going crazy over sweat. And nobody was doing this for Frank Sinatra or Dean Martin or Bean Crosby. If they tried to spit gum or throw sweat on the women, child, they probably would have got slapped in their face. The women just wasn't accepting that from them, but they were definitely accepting it from Elvis Presley. And soon, Elvis started to be a national threat to the powers that be. For one, they felt like he possessed too much power. You know what I mean? They felt like he had too much control, and they also felt like with all this control and power, that he would corrupt young white America because they felt like the young white teen girls would end up getting loose in the tail and of course if they got loose in the tail the young boys that they were throwing it to them boys wasn't gonna turn it down you know what I'm saying so they started to feel like there's gonna be a rise in teen pregnancy you know there's gonna be a lot of fornicating unmarried women just basically America was going to lose its fabric of like religious and you know the, the do right type thing and they also saw Elvis raucous and rowdy music as just bringing down white America as a whole anyway even the fact that white America would like this type of music. They saw white America as getting on the same level as African American people. They felt like white Americans were now jungle booties or something. You know, I don't know what to call them, whatever language they use. They just felt like that white America was going to start behaving in a way that was supposed to be beneath them. And so some of the parents started to ban Elvis from their homes, you know what I'm saying? And also he couldn't go on some TV show. But of course, this is all dealing with the career side of things. And as y'all already know, we ain't here to talk about no doggone careers, baby. We ain't talking about no discographies. Baby, we are talking about the scandalous, hottest scalding tea. I'm talking about my eyes was sitting on Bucktown, baby. And also Amazon, count your days, baby, sitting up there got this wig looking like this. Let's get to it. So this first bit of tea isn't even about Elvis. It's about how his family started to act once he started to get famous. Baby, y'all should have seen the way Elvis's daddy was acting. Child the folks out here say Vernon thought he was the star. So the first thing is this, when Elvis started making money, he rented his mother and father a house and this house was in like an upscale neighborhood but his parents did not have a phone. Well, the neighbors of his mother and father did have a phone and they told Vernon and Gladys that they could feel free to use their phone whenever they like. Honey, the next thing they know, Vernon Crazy Tail busting through their door day and night whenever he wanted to, to use their phone. And not only that, if he was on the phone and somebody in that household needed to use the phone, Vernon looking at them like this. Like, you know, like they need to wait till he get off the phone. And then started taking stuff from them folks' house, child. Like little trinkets or anything, little food, like apples, whatever he might see that he wanted, he would just take from those people's house like it belonged to him. He felt like he could do this because he was Elvis's daddy. Well, one person who was not feeling like this was the man of that actual household. So one day, Vernon found himself coming over there and tried to barge into the door and was looking crazy because the door was locked. That man ended up putting a latch on that side door because he didn't want Vernon just busting in and out of his house. And then when Elvis built Graceland, 
Vernon was sitting up there doing the most over there too. By all accounts, Vernon thought that was his house, like that he was the man of the house. As soon as Elvis was gone on the road or something like that, baby Vernon was coming out of his room, making demands, bossing the maids and stuff around, telling them that he liked stuff just like this, and basically, you know, feeling like that he had done all of this hard work, and now this was his house, and he could live the way he wanted to. But sir, you ain't barely worked a job a day in your life. This stuff ain't yours. And then one day, child, Vernon just showed that his whole mind was gone, baby. This man just really lost it. And what happened is that a blonde Hollywood star had stopped by the house to see Elvis, but Elvis was not there. So the star was about to leave, but here come Vernon running out the top of the stairs. Uh, Miss ma'am, miss ma'am, don't go anywhere. I'll show you around the house. And so Vernon did show her around the house, but when that was done, he also showed her his hot shot brand new car he just got and then invited her to jump in the car so he could show her all around town which he did all the way into the night and so while all of this is happening Gladys is just sitting up there watching this like uh, really but this man is really doing all of this so when Vernon got back Gladys lit into his behind something fierce honey said Gladys was like now that our son has got a little success you finna sit up there and just skedaddle around with this young Hollywood starlet boy I'll bust you all upside your head I will lay you low if you try it and child listen at this honey that was not an idle thread coming from Gladys because let me tell y'all something else rumor has it that after Elvis started touring and staying away from home a lot Vernon started to beat on Gladys one time Elvis came home and saw a mark on his mama face and got right up in his daddy face and was like if you touch again I'm going to kill you. But one thing about it, what Elvis didn't know is he didn't have to lift a finger to do nothing, honey. Gladys had it handled. Because, see, there was this one story where Vernon had walked into the kitchen where Gladys was and he started trying to shove her and kind of push her around and curse her out and stuff like that. Baby, Gladys took a pot of peas that she was cooking on the stove. All you heard was, block off. So when everybody in the house started trying to run in and see what was wrong, child, they said all they saw was Vernon laid out on the floor, covered with peas, knocked out cold. So Gladys was not playing a little bit. And actually around this time, she was much more moody than she ever had been. And now let me move on to Gladys to tell you why. See, while Vernon was prospering and having a great time with this new life, Gladys was suffering terribly and she was woefully unhappy. Gladys's whole life had been wrapped up into Elvis. Everything she did day in and day out, she had done for her boy. Well now her boy was this famous young man and he had been basically ripped right from his mother's arm. Now he had more fun things to do, you know what I'm saying? Now he he didn't want to sit up all day up under his mama talking to her. He was just living the life in front of him, but Gladys was having a hard time with it because she missed her son and she loved her son and she wanted to spend time with him. And the times that he did come home, he would only stay for maybe like three days before he was gone again. Elvis tried. One time he even invited her to go on tour with him. But girl, Gladys crazy tell self jumped on one of the fans, girl. That girl was just a yanking and pulling at Elvis and screaming and stuff, baby. Next thing anybody know, Gladys came in and put the hands on that girl. You hear what I'm saying to you? Said Gladys had grabbed that girl up and kind of jerked her over to the side and was asking her, you know, why are you pulling at my boy like that? Why are you yanking at him? You're trying to hurt my boy. And the girl kind of like was just frozen and was like, no ma'am, no ma'am, I'm not trying to hurt your boy. I love Elvis. I'm in love with your son, ma'am. And when she said this, Gladys kind of just like froze and let her go. And then Elvis saw what was going on and he came and grabbed his mother up and later on in the room, he came to his mama and he was like, mama, you can't be doing this. You know what I'm saying? This is my life. I love this life. These are my fans. You cannot do my fans like this. If you cannot deal with it, then you need to go home. You cannot come on tour because this is my life. And so after this, Gladys really just returned home and just continued to suffer. And so to lift herself up or to help herself out, she started to drink a lot. And at first she started off drinking beer, but this quickly progressed into liquor and basically Gladys would be plastered. In fact, her sister later said that she felt like Vernon kept Gladys plastered so he could kind of do his own thing without worry or fear that Gladys would be saying anything or that she would shut up complaining about their son. And then something happened that broke the camel's back. Elvis joined the military. This was just way too much for Gladys. You know, firstly, she was worried that she wouldn't see her son much at all. And then she was worried that her son might get hurt in the military. And so eventually, Gladys drank herself to death. Elvis was absolutely devastated at his mother's death. They say he took it so badly that four men had to carry him out of the car at her gravesite. Like he wailed loudly. He told his mama, I love you, mama, you know, and I'm so sorry you were my favorite girl. You know, really just broken. As a matter of fact, it's also said that something snapped and changed inside of Elvis 
once his mother passed away. And this is not something that was recognized at that moment, but over time, it was clear to people that Elvis had changed. Now let's get into some rumors about the king himself. And don't pay attention to this wig, y'all, cause it's getting on my nerves too. Now Elvis was already very sexually active before his mother passed away. In fact, there is a story out about Elvis's supposed first time. And this story happened after Elvis's first hit, It's All Right, started making rounds, okay? This is when he was touring like at the hay rides and things like that. So anyways, he was on tour and they stopped at a hotel and there was this kind of groupy young teen girl that was hanging around. So Elvis invited her up to the room. After they had finished doing the do, Elvis ran out of the hotel room and ran over to where his friends were waiting and he was very nervous and shaken up. And when they asked him, you know, how was it or what's wrong? Elvis was like, I don't know, you know, the condom broke, the condom broke. So everybody's kind of nervous and everything and all of a sudden Elvis takes off. He goes and grabs the girl out of the hotel room. They jump in the car and they leave. And so people are wondering just where the heck has Elvis gone? Well, when he gets back, he tells them. He's taken that girl and he took her to the emergency room and he demanded that the people in the emergency room give her a dush. And I guess the dush worked and she never got pregnant or something like that because that's just where that story ends. And again, that supposedly is Elvis's first encounter with sex. Since then, there were tons of stories that have like floated around about him and his sexual relationships. But after his mother passed away, Elvis started to do some really, really bad and harsh things. Like he kind of just went crazy a little bit, especially when he was in the military and stationed in Germany. And yes, the rumor that Elvis Presley liked very young girls is said to be true. In fact, one of the first girls he messed with over in Germany was a 15 year old named Margie. And baby, the folks say that Elvis was laying down with that little girl so doggone much that he ended up writing his friends and telling them that he named this girl Grind City. But while he was laughing and having a good time with his homeboys, soon after that, his little tail should have been called Crying City because that's what he was when he found out Margit was pregnant. But he got away by the skin of his teeth because this young girl ended up aborting that baby. After messing with Margit, there was another 15 year old that Elvis messed with over in Germany and he referred to her as Leg. And just to put things in perspective for you guys, Elvis around this time is like 21, 22 years old, okay? So that's just kind of so y'all can see the age gap. And then while he is messing with this 15 year old Lex, he started to talk to another girl. This was 19 year old Elizabeth but he and Elizabeth had a very different relationship as a matter of fact him and Elizabeth never went to bed he never slept with her around this time he also acted like a gentleman to her you know he would take her out on dates you know they would go to the movies they would spend a lot of passionate time together he also went and spent Thanksgiving with her family and over time although he had not slept with this girl Elvis started to develop feelings for her and he also got quite possessive he wanted her to himself but he didn't want to marry this girl. He didn't even want to be in a relationship with her, like be boyfriend and girlfriend. He didn't want no titles. He just wanted her to be his. And so Elvis tried to think of a way to keep Elizabeth around and he did come up with a way. And that is when he went to Elizabeth's parents and he asked them if Elizabeth could come to stay with him and be his personal assistant. And her parents said yes. And so in Elizabeth's mind, she know that she and Elvis have not slept together so far, but she feels like, you know, this is kind of her man, you know? So she's feeling like, when she moves into this household that they probably finna get down to the nitty gritty. But surprisingly, when she gets there, Elvis actually does treat her like a personal assistant and his private secretary, but she does have one extra job duty and that duty is to sleep in the bed with him. To sleep in the bed with him. There shall be no sexual relations at all. So this woman just ends up being a bed warmer for him. So you know what I mean? Sleeping in the bed with him, it starts to get hard for her. Trying her legs start jumping a little bit. She start getting hot in the tail, you know? Things start to heat up down there. So she kind of just looking over at him, but she cannot make a move on him because Elvis will not sleep with her. And then things get really crazy when Elvis is not sleeping with her, but he starts bringing other women home that he does sleep with. And then Elvis starts to get disrespectful too, because he would sleep with these women or whatever. Then after it was over, he would send them home and knock on the wall for Elizabeth to come in there to the bed after that woman was gone. It is rumor out here that Elizabeth basically would have to lay in the wet spot. You know what I'm saying? The bed would still be warm and wet from the woman that just left 
before she came in there and she said that she comforted herself knowing that you know those women they got to have Elvis sexually but those women went while she was able to stay and then one day she finally asked Elvis you know why can't we make love you know I love you and Elvis basically told her hey I want you to be long term and for women to be long term with me I don't want to sleep with them you know that's for throwaway type women that's not for a woman that I want to keep around for a relationship and so Elizabeth just kind of dealt with this and I mean Elvis slept with a multitude of young women and girls over there in Europe. Now, gossip claims there was this young airman by the name of Curry Grant who used to recruit these girls for Elvis. Curry would basically go on the prowl and start to look for a group of great looking girls. He would walk up to those girls and he would say, hey, do you girls want to meet Elvis Presley? And so when everybody got together and they got around Elvis, Elvis would pretty much kind of point out who he thought was most beautiful and kind of corner that girl and get her alone and all of the rest over girls, Curry Curry could have his pick from as well as any other airmen that were around. It's claimed that Curry was actually the one to recruit Priscilla Beaulieu. And Priscilla Beaulieu was a beautiful 14 year old who had actually just come over from the United States herself. Her father was an officer in the US military. And honey, this is already a hot mess, but baby, it's about to get a lot hotter and a lot messier. Baby, listen to this. The folks on the street say that Curry didn't even have to approach Priscilla. Said Priscilla walked right up to him herself and said, hey, I want you to introduce me to Elvis Presley. And per the rumor, Curry messes stinking tail told Priscilla that he would take her to see Elvis, but first he needed something from her himself. Yeah. And honestly, that cha really should have been whoop cha because baby let Curry tell it what he told Priscilla he needed was some sex baby as a matter of fact he said he had sex with Priscilla four times before he even introduced her to Elvis and it is said that Curry was saying this in his later years and kind of bragging about it you know what I'm saying like yeah I, I introduced her to Elvis but you know I made her give it up to me so basically when she got over to Elvis she was good and used and this was a 14 year old girl that they were talking about but baby before we get too mad at Curry child the tea gets even deeper and messier than this baby because folks on the streets claim that Priscilla was so bold and so ready to do this to meet Elvis because it is claimed that her mother and her father actually put her up to it to meet Elvis. Like basically they knew what she was going to have to do but they wanted their daughter to meet Elvis to make their lives better. Now Priscilla has come out to say that this was a lie and that her parents never did anything like this but once again Cha. However it happened, Priscilla Beaulieu did indeed end up meeting Elvis Presley and immediately Elvis was taken aback by this girl's beauty. Oh, he was absolutely stunned, honey. I mean, the man fell head over heels. Immediately, he started giving Priscilla all type of gifts. You know what I'm saying? He started giving her his time. And the tea on the street say that before long, Elvis was laying the tongue smack down on Priscilla, baby. They say that Elvis was going to town on that girl. And at first, Priscilla was enjoying this. You know what I'm saying? She was in love with what Elvis was doing to her. But then soon, the tongue was not the... And Priscilla was begging for a little bit more. But once again, Elvis would not give this to Priscilla. He would not actually have intercourse with her. And it was because he said he wanted her to stay a virgin. Basically said that he told Priscilla, no, you know what I mean? That'll ruin everything. You need to remain a virgin. And that's the way this needs to go. So clearly Elvis had some type of issue with, you know, I don't know. It was something about having sex with a woman that I guess he felt like that made the woman dirty or something. And the thing of it is, is that it was very, very easy for Elvis to give these commands to people like Priscilla and Elizabeth where he would tell them that no I don't want you guys sexually it'll ruin it and all this good stuff because he could perform these oral things and then get all excited but then go right next door and actually have sex with a girl that he didn't care about you know what I mean so he didn't have any pressure built up but poor little Priscilla and Elizabeth they kind of had female blue ball and yes I do understand that I am referring to a 14 year old girl like this with a grown man but this is really the only way that I can tell the story because this is how the story is you see what I'm saying this is the story these are the rumors so I have to kind of tell the story the way it was put to me or the way I found it so get what I'm saying I'm just basically trying to get a point across and by the way Elvis's love life at this time is just ridiculously messy okay he has Priscilla that he's now dating and messing around with then he has Elizabeth that's just kind of in his possession as his personal secretary and some rumors even say that he had a girlfriend back home in the U.S. and this young lady's name was Anita Wood and so for a while Elvis is kind of like juggling all three of these women as time moves on Anita Wood and Elizabeth 
kind of get cut off. And Priscilla ends up being his main woman or his real woman. And we'll get back to her in a minute. But right now, I want to insert another rumor in here. And this is about the way Elvis Presley behaved back at Graceland. And word on the street is that when Elvis would make these visits home to Graceland, he would gather all of these 14, 15-year-old girls from around town, invite them to Graceland, and then when they got there, Elvis would have these pillow fights. They said while he was fighting with them, he would be like tickling them and rubbing them. They would be smooching and kissing and I don't know he was having pillow fights or something I don't know child and then let's move on to the rumors of how Elvis started to treat his friends since he had become famous first off Elvis and his friends and his male family members had kind of come up with this little crew and they called themselves the Memphis Mafia and of course Elvis was the dun of this Memphis Mafia baby these folks is out here saying that Elvis started demanding that his other homeboys go and fix him ice water he started demanding that uh, they put the cigarette inside of his mouth and light it for him. He basically started to act like these guys needed to be there at his beck and call no matter what. It could be 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. He didn't care. They were supposed to drop their lives and they were supposed to come to him and do whatever he needed. Baby, I don't even care if he told them to go get his shoes out the closet. They better go do it. And then he would start doing things to test their loyalty. Let's say it's uh, the day before Christmas, okay? These guys are ready to spend Christmas with their own family and things like that, Elvis would call these guys up and tell them, hey, you know, I got a plane waiting for you. Uh, go get on the plane. It's going to take you to Florida. And when you get to Florida, I have a certain task waiting there for you. So these guys would be like, oh, you know, got to go do it because it's Elvis. Jump on the plane, get to Florida, and there is nothing there to be done. So they're on the phone calling Elvis like, okay, boss, what do you need me to do? And Elvis would be like, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Three, four days have passed and there was nothing that they had to do and then finally Elvis would let them come home and they missed Christmas with their family. And he would do this just because he was a jerk. And honey, don't you let it be no women around, honey. Chade said if women were around with Elvis and his Memphis Mafia, Elvis would act clean up and he would always demean these other men and just basically put them down, like always show who the boss is. Like if he saw one of his homeboys cozying up to a girl or one of his homeboys kind of acting a little macho or something like that Elvis would be in the corner like you know uh hey hey Daniel come over here and check out the diamonds in my ring make sure they sit right just stuff like that to kind of just seem like the guy is way down here and not only would Elvis embarrass his friends in front of the girls if he saw that one of his friends really started to like a girl Elvis would do everything in his power to seduce these women and nine times out of ten it worked so he would sleep with these women and then after it was over kind of come up to the friend and be like see man I, I saved you you know what I'm saying you was about to get with this woman she's a floozy she gave it up to me so easily so really i saved you from getting your heart broke and rumor says that there was this one guy elvis kept around his name was lamar and this guy was heavyset and the way elvis behaved was almost like he was keeping this guy around as a joke hey, like let's say that elvis has all of his memphis mafia okay and they are uh, somewhere with a whole bunch of model women all of the rest of the men in the memphis mafia they probably were not the most handsome things in the world but they definitely had some kind of look to him and so what would happen is that Elvis would have all of these model girls and he would tell the girls you know all right girls time to choose up who you want and so these girls would all flock to Elvis of course but then after Elvis gets like five of them he's like okay girls this is all I can have y'all go choose everybody else so the girls are running around choosing all of the other better looking men in the Memphis Mafia and it would always turn out where nobody would choose heavy set Lamar and so that's how Elvis did things like he kind of degraded him like that and speaking of Lamar, there's another rumor that is out surrounding him. Um, so this Lamar guy loved Natalie Wood. I mean, he loved this woman's dirty draws. You know what I'm saying? He watched all of her movies. She was just everything to him, okay? Elvis found out about this and then started talking to Natalie Wood. And one day he actually slept with Natalie Wood. Well, Elvis made sure that Lamar would be the one to pick him up from Natalie Wood's house. And when Lamar came, you know, Lamar is kind of driving and he's like, man, you know, so you got with Natalie, huh? And Elvis is like, yep you know and so Lamar is like how was it man you got her like how was it I know she was beautiful I know she was amazing and here go Elvis uh, you know she was all right her stuff was kind of stinking but you know she was okay baby yes he did yes he did I know y'all cutting up but honey the gossip says that Elvis Presley said Natalie Wood TT was stinking girl and Natalie ought to be shaming herself child you know Elvis could have been lying 
But baby, I don't know. All I know is that the man said that the woman did not have good feminine hygiene. Let's move on. And speaking of Natalie Wood, gossip claims that Elvis messed around with a lot of Hollywood starlets. And one of the most notorious ones was dancing queen and Margaret. Oh yes, baby. Elvis and Miss Margaret were shooting a picture together named Viva Las Vegas in 1964. And of course, while they're shooting, they find out that they need to practice their lines together. But them folks was practicing their lines all right, up under the sheets, huffing and puffing. And baby, Elvis sure enough know he was a low down, dirty dog, honey. Because see, while he was sitting up there doing this with Aunt Margaret, Priscilla was actually living at Graceland. And no, they were not married. And yes, Priscilla was still very much underage, but Elvis had convinced her parents to let her come live with him. And uh, Aunt Margaret ain't crazy. She know Elvis got Priscilla at the house. And that's why her little tail started acting petty. Aunt Margaret turned out to be trifling and a messy behind side chick. She has done all kinds of interviews talking about Elvis was her soulmate and you know they were meant to be together. Her messy tail was running off at the mouth so bad that she actually did an interview around that time and put out to the world that her and Elvis were engaged. And Priscilla Presley was not having it baby. They say Priscilla tried to bust Elvis all upside his head child. Was throwing all kind of vases at that man. And Elvis was running around looking stupid because he had to convince Priscilla as well as the public that he and Ann Margaret were not engaged and that was very true. Ann Margaret should be ashamed of herself because the rumor has it that Elvis had never told Ann Margaret this. She just went out and said that on her own. And then you have actress Donna Douglas whom Elvis was messing around with when they were filming the movie Frankie and Johnny. And Elvis had Donna mine all messed up child. The whole time they were filming they were sleeping together but not only that Elvis was like spending a lot of time with Donna. You know they would read religious texts together and just have all of these nights where they would sit up and kind of look out at the stars and the moon. Elvis fed her all type of BS. Now he really did tell Donna that they would be soulmates and stuff like that and she bought it. Donna very much expected to be Mrs. Elvis Presley. Child them folks said cut that's a wrap on that doggone movie. Donna never saw Elvis again child. Baby it said that Donna was so doggone hurt that it took her years to get over it. And so like I said all of this stuff was going on with Elvis and these other women these movie stars and he was filming all these movies and all this kind of stuff while Priscilla was living at Graceland. Now Priscilla came over to Graceland, she was probably only about 15, and she and Elvis had continued to sleep together and do all of this oral stuff, but once again, they never really had sexual relations. In fact, Elvis started to tell Priscilla of basically like his dream, of why he wouldn't touch her, and why he kind of wanted her to be a virgin. And basically what he said is that he really would have rather had a woman as a child, and raised that child up into the woman that he wanted. So he wanted to mold Priscilla. He wanted to turn her into his creation and that's what he did. Before Priscilla even knew what was going on, she was locked in his home without a light. Her hair was dyed jet black and he also made her grow it out very long and then he added this kind of beehive puffy style at the top. He darkened her eyes. He also made her tan and darken her skin. He even made her dress in the way that he commanded. And baby, don't let her come out the room without no high heels on. Oh, it was gonna be a problem. She also had to learn how to cater to him. Everything was all about him. Like her wants and her needs needed to match his wants and his needs. And in the end, rumor says what Elvis does was essentially turn Priscilla into him. She literally was the female him and that is the way he liked it. At the same time this transformation for Priscilla is happening, Elvis is also going through a transformation and that is the fact that he's trying to change his image, okay? He's trying to get away from that rock and roll bad boy with the gyrating hips and all this good stuff and he's trying to turn into like America's uh, son, you know what I'm saying? That's why he's joined the military and things like that. He wants to change his image so he can get an audience of all people, not just an audience of teen girls. And his manager feels like at this moment one of the best things for Elvis to do is to go ahead and get married. So Elvis does marry Priscilla on May 1st, 1967 and at this point Priscilla is actually 21 years old. And now that Priscilla is a young lady as well as his wife, they finally consummate their relationship. And before long Priscilla is pregnant. So this is now really a dream come true for Priscilla. She loves this man. She has sacrificed and given up so much to be a part of Elvis's life. And also Priscilla wants to make up for all that lost time where 
she and Elvis were not getting it on. So you know, Priscilla is just hot and ready all the time, baby. And per the rumor, while she was pregnant, she wanted to continue having sexual relations with her husband. But when she came up to Elvis, Elvis told her no. And Priscilla kind of was hurt by this, but she kind of felt like, okay, you know, I'm pregnant. He doesn't want to have sex with me during the pregnancy. And so she let that go. And she goes through her pregnancy and, and she delivers a beautiful baby girl by the name of Lisa Marie. And Elvis is very happy with his baby daughter. But once again, that feeling of desire is clearly still there for Priscilla, you know? So now she'd had this baby. So honey, she is ready to get down. You know what I'm saying? She missing our man, baby. So Priscilla said that one night she put on this black negligee. You know, she made sure the bedroom was all sexy, had candles and rose petals, smelling good, girl. The girl was ready. And Elvis walks into the room, you know, he looks around, check out the scene, walk up towards the bed, look at Priscilla, turn around, shut the door and leave. And once he does that, Priscilla's like, uh, excuse me, what this mean? You know what I'm saying? So she getting up out of the bed and going to talk to him. And once he does talk to her, Priscilla is floored by what she hears. Elvis basically takes her hand into his and kind of sits down beside her and tells her, you know, you're a mother now, Priscilla. You know, I, I can't have sexual relationship with you. You're a mother now. It's just, there's no way. You're supposed to be godly and warmth and, you know, motherly. And, you know, it's just, sex is just too dirty. I can't do that with you any longer. Let me repeat that look. Because, baby, that's exactly what I would have been looking. But, honey, Elvis said what he said. And he meant what he said. And this meant Priscilla was sitting there left confused and heartbroken. She was wondering just what the heck she had signed up for. And, honey, I could have told her what she signed up for. A life full of celibacy as a mother while Elvis got to go out here and screw around with whoever he wanted to. In fact, it is rumored that by the time the 70s came around, Elvis had actually gone and bought a bachelor pad in West Palm Springs almost every single weekend he and his Memphis Mafia friends would go over to that bachelor pad and just have all type of models showgirls and sometimes gossip say full-on prostitute and these women would let Elvis and his friends live out all of their sexual fantasies you know they would swim in the pool with no clothes on it was just really a raunchy rowdy situation Elvis was truly living a life of excess he was doing excess with the women and also he had been on drugs matter of fact he had been on drugs since the military but he was doing an excess of all of this stuff and so he just started to become like power drunk and his attitude and demeanor just really turned like rude and nasty the way he started to treat Priscilla was ridiculous. Elvis got so bold that not only would he actually just cheat with women and leave them behind, he started to have full-blown relationships behind Priscilla's back. There was a lady he was messing with by the name of Joyce Bova. As things got more and more serious, she wanted him to leave Priscilla. And so one night she just got fed up, you know, and they started fussing and she basically tried to do this little thing of, well, you ain't getting none from me tonight. And baby, before she was even out of the door, Elvis was on the phone with another lady by the name of Barbara Lee and inviting her over. And Barbara Lee did end up coming over and her and Elvis spent the night with each other. The very next morning, Barbara Lee was rushed out of the house and as Barbara Lee was in a car heading away from Elvis's little bachelor pad, Priscilla and Lisa Marie were in a car going to Elvis's bachelor pad. So the cars like passed each other and Priscilla showed up at the house of her husband and she had no idea that she had just passed one of his side chicks. And then to spill more gossip on that Joyce Bova lady, it is claimed that after a while she ended up getting pregnant by Elvis. But the tea on the street is that when she tried to tell Elvis that she was pregnant, he basically stopped her before she said anything and started basically telling telling her how he didn't find pregnant women attractive and how kind of he would kind of have to stop sleeping with her and Joyce didn't want to leave him alone so she got an abortion. Then you got the gossip surrounding a lady named Kathy Westmoreland who actually sang back up for Elvis for a while. Her Kathy Elvis had been going at her and going at her and then finally one night she slept with him and then she ended up saying what are you gonna do about Priscilla? Baby, don't you know they said Elvis jumped up and kind of yanked the cover off of her and was like, so what you saying? Are you saying I spent all this time training you up into what I want you to be and now you can't do this? God, now I gotta look for another woman to train. And per Kathy, this made her feel like an animal, like she had no feelings at all, kind of like she was a thing. Kathy was not wrong about Elvis making women feel like things or like they were less than because there's a rumor out there that one time at his bachelor pad with his Memphis Mafia, they had a whole bunch of girls come over there like they usually do and Elvis was playing pool and he ended up getting mad at one of the guys there okay so Elvis ended up taking the pool cue or the pool stick and threw it and it hit one of the women in her chest and said it about knocked the breath out of that girl like it hit her hard left a mark
mark and everything. Don't you know that Elvis just huffed off like she wasn't nothing? Didn't apologize, didn't do nothing, baby. Just, you know, she didn't matter. Then you got another rumor about another woman at his Palm Springs whorehouse. He brought her up there once again with all of his friends and while they were in bed getting ready to make love or after they had made love, Elvis was so drunk and so hot that he ended up peeing on himself. Well, instead of the woman getting up out of the bed, she actually just scooted over on the very, very edge and tried to like sleep on a dry spot. Girl, the next morning asked me if Elvis cared. Ask me if he apologized. Ask me if he was even embarrassed. I'ma say no to all of that because she found him gossiping and laughing to his homeboys telling them, hey, hey man, y'all should have seen her. She had to scoot over and try to sleep on this little old bitty narrow slit of bed that wasn't wet. Hey, y'all should have seen it. You know, just had no care in the world. Like, she just didn't matter. Hey y'all, I need to pause it right here. Now let me tell y'all another incident about how Elvis treated girls like things. So one day he had a show in Las Vegas, right? And he went to a restaurant and there was this 18 year old blonde waitress. So Elvis and his crew invites this girl back to his hotel room. And when she gets there, she tells Elvis that she has a headache, all right? And he says, I got something for you. I got something for you. Baby, he took that girl on a drug binge, gave her all type of pills. The girl passed out, baby, couldn't tell you nothing that happened happened to her. All she knows is that she woke up in the hospital and had to stay in the ICU for two weeks. She said during that whole time, Elvis never came to visit her. However, she did hear that he paid somebody $10,000 to keep the whole situation quiet, but she said she didn't hold any hard feelings against him. Woo, cha. Let's get back to the video. And so up until this point in the story, we definitely have not just been on one straight track like it is with other stories, but that is because Elvis just has a way too much tea from different time periods and things like that. But to kind of try to get it back on track, in October of 1973, Priscilla just had enough of his cheating ways, everything that he was doing, him going out with his friends all the time to the uh, West Palm Springs uh, beach house and things like that. She was just sick of it. And so she finally divorced Elvis. And per the rumor, when she told Elvis that she wanted a divorce, everything was pretty much cool. And then out of nowhere, all hell broke loose because Elvis's little curly head tail found out that Priscilla Priscilla was not only leaving him, she was divorcing him to be with another man named Mike Stone. Priscilla had went back to the house, I guess, to talk to Elvis or to get something or something, baby. Child Priscilla walked up in that bedroom. Elvis grabbed her up by the neck and kind of held her up against the wall and threw her on the ground and took her right then and there. And she also said that the whole time that Elvis was pumping and doing all of this stuff to her, that he was basically like in her ear telling her, you know, I'm gonna give it to you like a man's supposed to give it to you. You know, this what you've been wanting? I'm gonna be a real man for you and I'm gonna give it to you I'm gonna give it to you and doing stuff like that but whatever Elvis did trying to give it to her like a man it still didn't work and Priscilla still left after Priscilla left things really really started to go downhill for Elvis Presley for one he started to just get bored with his life and he started to do crazy stuff baby folks will be driving around and all of a sudden they would get pulled over by this police officer when the police officer got out of the car and walked up to them it was Elvis Presley in full police garb with a badge on and some people said that that was a real police badge I don't know where he got it from he would pull these people over lean in and you know give them the whole why were you speeding and all this good stuff and the people People are just kind of shocked like is this really Elvis Presley pulling me over and so Elvis would really get their information like a serious cop and then he would go to his car and he would write the ticket and then when he came back he would have a signed autograph and kind of smile and give it to him and go jump back in his police car and ride off and the policeman thing wasn't the only thing like Elvis had developed a serious passion about law like law enforcement like he really wanted to be a lawful authority figure so much so that he went to visit President Nixon and basically told President Nixon that he needed to give him some type of uh, government badge you know he needed to be undercover for the government and keep an eye out on all of these other musical artists to make sure they weren't doing anything bad and so Nixon is kind of just looking at Elvis in his office and kind of just listening to this crazy man rant really honestly so Nixon is just kind of there and basically just tells Elvis what he wants to hear and he's like okay son you want a badge I'll give you a badge and he opens his drawer pulls out some type of government badge that really didn't even mean much and gave it to Elvis and was like here you go and Elvis was so proud of that badge like he really really felt very important let me tell you just how crazy Elvis must have looked up there because people claim that Elvis came to the White House with this purple bodysuit on you know them little bodysuits with the collars that he was wearing on stage he came with that on to visit the president and had those big old shades on girl with a fur coat and then when you're an official government law enforcement officer or whatever Elvis was 
what do you need? You need guns, right? And so it said that Elvis got carried away with guns. So his house all of a sudden started being stacked up with guns and Elvis also started to carry a gun on him wherever he went. And because there was no immediate danger around Elvis or nobody was like doing anything unlawful whenever he came by, Elvis never really got the chance to use his gun. So he had to find some kind of way. So basically when somebody showed up on TV that he didn't like, that was offensive to him and he felt the need to shoot the TV screen out. And that's what he did. Hey guys, I'm sorry, but I gotta pause it again. It's just too much dog on tea, baby. So y'all already know that Elvis is acting erratically around this time, right? Child, how about this? So he has Lisa Marie to come down to his house one weekend, and she's probably about seven, eight years old. I'm not sure exactly. Lisa Marie is outside in the front yard, and she's just playing with a little boy like this her age, right? They are playing cowboys and Indians or something like that. Elvis comes out of the house with a machine gun, baby. Finna gun that little boy down, sis because he talking about some that little boy was trying to shoot his daughter that was a toy gun that little boy had baby lisa and that little boy just took off the screaming baby but come on let's get back to the video and this type of behavior was making it clear to the people around elvis that he was kind of going off the deep end you know they kind of felt like he was losing his mind nobody was really bold enough or brave enough to come up to him and tell him like elvis like what are you doing you're doing too much and because nobody did elvis continued on his path and the drug actually increased so much so that some of the people around him said at this time in the 70s Elvis was like a walking medicine cabinet and there was this one time when he had his own personal doctor which is Dr. Nick he told Dr. Nick to set up a dentist appointment for him okay so Dr. Nick does and Elvis goes to the dentist's office and when the dentist walks out of the room Elvis jumps up out of the dental chair opens up all of the cabinets like just raiding through the drawers and everything looking for a prescription drug and there was another notable incident that Elvis was rumored to have with his gun so it was one day before a show he was up in his hotel room and so Elvis just has his gun in his hand and he's just just kind of slurring around and everything and suddenly he puts his arm over his daddy's shoulder when he does his finger just thoop, hits the trigger gun shoots dr nick in the chest now luckily the bullet did not penetrate uh dr nick's skin but it still left a huge burn mark on him and so again like i said before elvis is just full of excess it's just like anything he wants he gets and so what happened is it has basically turned him into a monster and he just has really bad behavior and this is also when he started doing questionable things regarding racism now race was something that had always hanged over elvis's head anyway because it was very clear that he had stolen music from black people but in response to that elvis claimed that he had always given black people their props he had said in many interviews that you know when people asked him about rock and roll that he did not invent rock and roll you know it was always here with the black people but regardless to whether elvis gave black people props or not about the music that really was not the basis of why black people believed he was racist a lot of black people believed he was racist it's because there was a rumor that while elvis was in germany he had said that the only thing that a black woman could do for him was to shine his shoes and buy his record. I read about that rumor online, but even on top of me reading about that rumor, I actually received an email from one of my viewers who said that his granddad in Germany asked um, Elvis for an autograph and his grandfather was a black man. And he said that Elvis told his grandfather to his face that uh, no, the only thing that an N word can do for me is to shine my shoes and buy my record. But to counter his email, I received another email from another viewer and this is the viewer that said that her granddad grew up with Elvis and she said that her granddad would stand up with tears in his eyes to tell anybody that Elvis Presley was not a racist she said that her granddaddy it used to bother her all the time when people called Elvis a racist and he would get very angry and indignant and he would try to make people understand that Elvis was not a racist and Elvis loved black music he loved black people and he loved the black culture so you know I don't know but I will say this from my research I see why it was hard for black people to accept that Elvis was not a racist because of some of the things he started doing in the 1970s and one of the things he did was call out one of his background singers for her hairdo. This lady's name was Estelle and she sang with the Sweet Inspirations who sang background for Elvis. And so Estelle is just sitting up there thinking she all cute, honey. She got her hair laid. Baby, why come Elvis grabbed that microphone and told his audience that Estelle was back there looking like uh, Step and Fetch It? 
Well, one rumor says step and fetch it. Another rumor says buckwheat. I'm not sure which. But he did say that she looked like one of those characters. Cha, Estelle was so doggone embarrassed. The only thing she could really do was just drop her hair. But it's claimed that she tried to make a joke out of it and was like, you know, ooh, I'm gonna get you, boy. You know, but she was embarrassed. But by that same token, Estelle was not the only one he called out. There was also this white male named Charlie Hodge that was like Elvis's uh, do boy, kinda. His stage do boy. You know, he would take the cape and take the belt and all that kind of stuff. And so he came out on stage and Elvis introduced him to the audience. But then Elvis was like, you know, this is Charlie. He does, uh, uh, you know, Charlie, what is it that you do? You know what I'm saying? What am I even paying you for? And he was trying to act like he was joking, but Elvis was saying it in a very serious manner. And then you have the thing that he was doing to Kathy Westmoreland, the one that he had slept with and the one that was singing background. He also embarrassed her on stage. He basically introduced her to the audience and he was like, oh yeah, Kathy, y'all need to get to know her. She's very affectionate, baby. She'll give it to you anytime, any place, no matter what. Uh, matter of fact, she's been giving the whole band affection. The whole band been having her. And then after that show where he completely embarrassed everybody, Elvis still did not learn his lesson. And then at another show, he embarrassed everybody all over again. First of all, he introduced Kathy again. He got the mic real close to his mouth and he said, oh yeah, Kathy, she give good head. She'll suck you real good, okay? And then after he said that about her, he started saying, woo wee, you know, the stage smell like onions and green peppers. Those sweet inspirations back there, they have been frying catfish. Girls, have you been frying catfish? And so the sweet inspirations were absolutely horrified and very embarrassed and so everybody was just stunned even the audience was stunned as to why Elvis was acting this way and so Elvis started to feel the embarrassment on himself and he started to be like oh you know the sweet inspirations why y'all acting like that y'all better get y'all heads up y'all know I'm just playing with y'all and then he became even more embarrassed because they were not responding the way he wanted them to respond so then he got mean again uh get y'all heads up shoot as a matter of fact y'all know I'm just playing if you can't take the heat get the f out the kitchen and and so two of the sweet inspirations walked off as well as Kathy Westmoreland. The only inspiration that stayed was a lady by the name of Myrna. And then instead of Elvis just letting it go, you know what I'm saying? You done messed up, sir. Just leave it alone. He walks over to Myrna and is like, you know, Myrna, I'm sorry. You know, take my ring. Here, take the ring off the finger. And Myrna was like, you know, no, Elvis, just chill out. Take, take the ring. Take the ring. I'm sorry. This mean I'm sorry. You know, just doing too much. Why are you doing this? And his audience did not understand. And so like I said, Yes, Elvis was doing racist behavior, but he was doing stuff to everybody. It was like he wanted to embarrass everybody because he was mad and heartbroken at how his life was going. You know, just basically like misery loves company. And so when it comes down to the racist argument, was Elvis just inherently racist? Like racism was just inside of him? Or was he racist with the uh, times that he lived in? You know what I'm saying? And just going by that. Or was he only racist when he wanted to hurt somebody's feelings? Or is all of that just racist anyway? You know what I mean? You can't just pick and choose when you're racist, you're just a racist anyway. What do you guys think? Well, I'm gonna tell you one thing, regardless as to what you think, and regardless as to if Elvis was racist or not, there are definitely rumors out here about him and black women. For one, it's claimed that Elvis was possibly having an affair with one of the sweet inspirations, and what do you know? It was the same one that stayed on the stage with him that night, Miss Myrna. And gossip says that Elvis and Myrna messed around, but when Myrna was asked about it, and I actually think I'm gonna put that video in the description, when she was asked about it, she said that you know Elvis wanted to you know what I mean but she just never gave into it and she just didn't want to mess up their very close brother sister type relationship but he definitely would flirt with her and she could just tell that if she wanted to lay the man down she could have then you have the rumors about Elvis Presley when he was growing up near the black town of Shake Rag there are a lot of rumors that Elvis kind of got fresh with a lot of the girls back then you know what I mean because that's who he was around that's the community he was around so you're only around black girls and you're a young man regardless of what the color is as a young man your hormones gonna be good and popping so it is claimed that a lot of little touchy filly and rubby rubby on a lot of those black girls that he grew up around and I'm not sure about that but I do know about this time that Elvis Presley made this black journalist too mad baby it was back in like 1955 1956 or something like that and Elvis had become a part of a tour called the Goodwill Review well this Goodwill Review was a black tour and at one of the stops that Elvis was performing at there was this black journalist there by the name of Nat O. Williams. He was so disturbed by what he saw he started typing up a column and what he said in this column is that he saw like thousands of black brown
around beige girls, you know, hollering, acting a fool over Elvis Presley. And he was mad because B.B. King had just got off the stage before Elvis and he said he didn't really hear a peep from the girls. You know what I'm saying? They just sitting up there clapping for B.B. King, but this white man come up there and y'all losing y'all doggone mind. So again, I am not at all clear on Elvis's relationship with the black community. I don't know if it was a love-hate relationship. I don't know what's going on. I know that Quincy Jones said that Elvis was a racist and, you know, stuff like that. So, baby, I don't know. Last time moves along in the 1970s, like I've told you before, Elvis is doing too doggone much. He's rude, he's nasty, he's mean, and some of his closest friends have started to turn against him. He fired three guys that were his very best friends from teenage years, you know. And they did something, and Elvis just had enough, and so he fired these three guys. Well, these three guys were very upset that they got fired, and so they ended up starting to write a book about Elvis. And this book talked about Elvis bad, honey. It's called Elvis What Happened, if you want to look it up. But they talked about Elvis and his women. They talked about Elvis and his drug abuse. Like, they really talked about Elvis bad. And so Elvis, who is already behaving very badly, now starts to worry about his public image. So now he starts to act even more irrationally. He's now engaged to this 20-year-old lady named Ginger. Picture this. Elvis, who is acting very irrationally, he's on these drugs, he's upset about his image and all of this good stuff, is now engaged to a woman that's 20 years younger than him. Child, next thing you know, bullets was whizzing past Ginger's head and everything, child. It's gossip out here that claims that Elvis shot at that woman while she was leaving. He had his uh, security guards one time to take the air out of her tires. Um, one time he told them to lock the Graceland gate so she couldn't go anywhere. Like Elvis was treating that woman any kind of way. And the only reason he was doing this is because she didn't want to spend all 24 hours of her life with him all the time. She wanted to still go out and shop. You know, she wanted to go drink and have fun with her friends. And Elvis, like, would just be crazy jealous because he felt like if he really let her go that she might uh, meet somebody else and she might abandon him. And on top of him acting like this with Ginger, his money is starting to slow down a little bit. There was a point in time where Elvis had made $800,000 for 12 hours. Now he was down to making um, $180,000 for a two week performance. That is a big drop in money. He was now borrowing from the banks and you know he owed money. And in order to vent his frustration at how everything in his life was really crumbling, Elvis once again picked up his gun and they claimed that he shot out another TV screen. And he also shot out his bedroom window. But although all of this crazy stuff was happening, Ginger decided to stay with Elvis and soon they were planning their wedding. In fact, that was one of the things that they were talking about when they were laying in the bed on the morning of August the 16th, 1977. It was around 8 o'clock in the morning and Elvis had been up all night. He told Ginger that he could not sleep and he told her that he was going to go to the bathroom and sit in his reading chair and try to relax. Ginger said okay to her fiance and she lay back down and she fell asleep. When she awoke, it was 1 o'clock p.m. She noticed that Elvis was not laying in the bed beside her, but she didn't really think much of it, so she just got up out of the bed and she started, like, going around the room, uh, opening up drawers and putting on her clothes and all of that good stuff. But when she did that and Elvis did not come into the room or he didn't make a call from downstairs to see if she was up, that's when she started to think that things were strange because you got to remember, Elvis had been very possessive over her and he always wanted to be in her presence and all of this good stuff. So she started to think that was strange. So she called downstairs and she asked to see if Elvis was down there and they said no And then it's claimed that she went to the bathroom door and she knocked on the door and whispered his name But there was no answer So she slowly opened the door and when she opened it She saw Elvis like in face down in a crouch position almost like he was doing a Muslim prayer As she walked closer to him and crouched down beside him She saw that his face was kind of deeply buried into the shaggy rug And so she twisted his head and when she did she said she heard a release of breath like a release of air where he was like oh. and when she heard this Ginger thought everything was okay because she felt like Elvis had just passed out on his drugs because that's what he had been doing for the longest well immediately after he released that air his body and face and hands and stuff started to turn blue and that's when Ginger started to panic so she started to shake him and call his name and then she opened up his eyelids and she said that his eyes were bloodshot red like they were really red there was no white anywhere and she also said that at that same time his tongue started 
order to protrude out of his mouth and that's when she knew that Elvis was deceased. And so now she's just frantically screaming his name and crying and you know she gets on the phone and she's making all these different phone calls and one of the people that were called was Elvis's father Vernon. And so Vernon is like rushing up the stairs and he gets to the bathroom and it is claimed that he yelled out you know no son don't go don't leave me son don't leave me. And so with all of this commotion going around Lisa Marie who was actually there to visit her dad on this day came running up the steps trying to come into her dad's bedroom and that's when Ginger goes to the hallway and she blocks off um, Lisa Marie before she can see what's going on and Lisa Marie is like what is going on with my daddy tell me what's wrong with my daddy and Ginger is like nothing you know everything is okay and Lisa Marie is like no it's not you know what's wrong with my daddy what's wrong with my daddy and I think the child maybe was around nine years old if I'm not mistaken so you know she's just going crazy and Ginger is like no everything is fine Lisa Marie just go back downstairs go back downstairs and so Lisa Marie does and she's crying the whole way you know she knows that something is wrong with her father Elvis Presley was dead and as soon as it was confirmed that he was truly dead the cover-up started they could not let the public know that the king of rock and roll had been using drugs heavily they also could not let them know that this guy had passed away and the bathroom crouched over with his pants halfway down and so rumor has it that the newspapers reported that Elvis had died of a heart attack it could have been uh, any number of things you know what I'm saying they just said he had a multitude of different types of drugs in his system and they said that a lot of those drugs that he had taken were all at lethal limit and they also said that it probably wasn't even the drugs you know it also could have been the fact that he had a very bad fecal impaction thing where his uh, bowels were distended his um, intestines were distended because he had just that much bowel movement inside of him child he had so much doggone doo-doo I'm just use layman's terms baby he had so much doggone doo-doo piled up in him that they said when they cut open the intestine the doodle uh, in the middle was white girl it was white and hard and very dry that's how much boo-boo Elvis had in his system it looked like he had not had a bowel movement in for ever and so they said that that could have killed him and then they also said that it, the straining to try to have a bowel movement could have killed them and that could have been the cause of a heart attack so they just said that it was so many things that could have killed um elvis and then you have those people that believe that elvis didn't even die at all that day they feel like that a body double was used and elvis just didn't want to be famous anymore and so he kind of just went off to live his own life and ever since then those people that believe that have spotted elvis every dollar gonna wear honey whatever the case after Elvis Presley was reported to um, have passed that book that was written about him only a week before he passed away it was like a million dollar seller I mean it sold millions and millions of copies because everybody wanted to know who the real Elvis was and because of that the public reacted to the passing of the king and rock and roll with mixed emotions you have majority of the people who mourned Elvis who loved Elvis who missed him then you had this small amount of people who felt like hey serves him right you know what I'm saying for the way he was doing those drugs and the way he was treating people so it was just it was just kind of a mess really all the way around but whatever anybody thought whatever anybody said Elvis Presley had amassed icon status during his own lifetime and the man was now gone and he was 42 years old and this is the end of the old Hollywood scandalous tale of Mr. Elvis Presley I hope you guys loved this video if you did go ahead and hit the like button go ahead and subscribe I'll see y'all soon with a new video bye Amazon, I'm for real man, this messed up.